Hey guys, I know you are going to absolutely love this interview. I have to give you a little heads up behind the scenes. I had actually never met Damon Burton before this episode, but he came so highly recommended by our network, our peers, as the go-to for incredible SEO strategy and results. But by the end of this interview, we became buddies and I am obsessed with everything he puts out there now. Now he has run a seven figure agency for 13 years with zero paid ads. He actually still has some of his original clients from the agency he started 13 years ago, crazy. He basically specializes in how to show up at the top of Google without paying for ads. He's been in Forbes, entrepreneur, book author. He's worked with NBA teams, billion dollar companies, Shark Tank and Inc, 5,000 featured companies, blah, blah, blah. Without further ado, let's dive on into this interview with me and Damon. I was on your website and I was like, oh, this is awesome. Everything's positioned around being ethical and mm -hmm. full of integrity, which is really cool. And that's super rare in the SEO space. So yeah, that's actually something I, um, I have always kind of been that way, but it's been interesting um, now that because the market has kind of gotten, a, you know, there's the bad guy, there's bad guys in every industry. But um, I think the problem with SEO, why it has a lot of bad guys is because SEO genuinely takes a long time, you know, when you're doing it right. But I think a lot of the bad guys take advantage of that. And, and so it's been interesting to just naturally be a good guy. And then now I'm like, I guess I use that as a marketing position. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's kind of awkward. <laughs> okay. So how did you get into SEO? And I'll be straight up honest with you. I understand technically how it works, mm -hmm. but not really. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. I know I should be doing it. We're sitting on a gold mine, but it just doesn't happen. So, uh, so <laughs> all right. So why don't we start with a brief death? Brief definition. So SEO stands for search engine optimization. Mm -hmm. The goal is to show up higher on search engines for words that you can monetize, but without paying for ads. So I got into it because I started a car enthusiast website when, so I've been doing this for 14 years. Um, and I was in, so I was in my early twenties and I was big, you know, as early 20 males are, they're into cars. And so I had a, I started a car enthusiast website and it started to pick up traction. This was before Google Analytics. I mean, Analytics was probably around, but it wasn't like that everybody knows it now. And I, I stumbled across um, a thing called Webalizer and it would show server statistics. And I was like, holy crap, I actually have traffic on here. And so that got me thinking, well, how do I, how do I get better at design? Because I really just pieced it together and tried to figure it out. And, and so then I worked on improving my skill set as a designer and did design for a while. And then as it continued to grow, I said, how do I get into monetizing this? And so as I got into monetizing it, that's where I started to get into marketing. And there's a bunch of like mini stories in between, but really when I pivoted directly into SEO was um, I, I had built up enough clients on the side and you know maybe we talk about the side hustle thing in a minute, but I built up enough clients on the side that I said, okay, well, I can, let, let's go into SEO um, because I had a client come to, a design client come to me and say, what do you know about Google? And as, as you and I were talking about morals and ethics, I said, well, I know enough that I'm willing to try. Um, you know, I'll take a bet on you. You take a, a chance on you. You take a chance on me. But I don't, know, I don't know enough that I feel comfortable charging a lot for it. So how about I charge you nothing? But obviously, I didn't want to work for free. So I said, until I hit this goal. And then it, if I hit this goal, then you owe me retroactively. And then we start a, a retainer moving forward. So we had like a, it was like a three month goal or something like that. We ended up hitting it in three or three weeks. I don't know. It's been 14 years. So we hit the goal and there's still a client 14 years later. And so I still have half a dozen, a dozen clients that are with me for, for the whole 14 year journey, which is amazing considering yeah. most online marketing clients, probably more so SEO. They're lucky if they have clients for a year. So, um, that worked out really well. And I said, this is cool. Why don't I roll this out? You know, SEO was exciting. Um, it got my attention, but it was still in the design space a little bit, you know, working on websites. And so I felt comfortable transitioning into it. And so I rolled that. I, I gave that same proposition to a second client, another design client. And same results. We just killed it. And so at that point, I very clearly said, okay, I'm going to be the SEO guy. And I, I never wanted to be... For the first year or two, it was a one-man show. Now I have a team of 20 but when we first started, it was just cool to be self-employed. So for a year or two, it was, it was largely just me. And, and then I said, well, I should probably you know, take advantage. I, I have something here. I should do something with it. 
And then that opens up the whole discussion about scaling and VAs and this and that. But that's how I got into it. That is seriously so cool. And I will say, like, I've always heard that SEO is something everyone should do. And mm. technically, I acknowledge that. But the only <laughs> SEO, do you like how I put technically, which means like, sorry, that, I that, but I really that. respect it. <laughs> technically, so, te- when you say technically, it's really just your crutch to say, leave me alone. <laughs> no, it's like me saying, oh my gosh, please leave me alone. I'm so sorry. I haven't done anything with it because so I'm, I'm big in like YouTube. I love YouTube mm-hmm. and I do usually three to five videos per week. Mm-hmm. And I didn't take it super seriously until one day someone was like, Rachel, when you search for how to edit a TikTok, you're in the top three searches on page one. Mm. And I was like, that's just with video. Oh yeah. my gosh, what are we missing with blogging? And it yeah. kind of keeps, it actually keeps me awake at night. So I have yeah. a feeling people watching this are either like my clients need support with this or I need support with this. Um, I bet yeah. there's people who feel exactly we, like I do. We have a lot of mutual friends I won't throw out there, but a lot of these big players, every time I talk to them or I'll just walk them through like a brief conversation or like, hey, I noticed this thing on your website. And then I walk them through the opportunities and they're just like, I feel like such an idiot. I don't even want to start because I've been saying, like, it's such a big thing that they realize that they're missing that they're, there's almost some embarrassment to it. I want to understand the real power of SEO because sometimes people say like, oh, it's rank, this is ranking on page one or whatever. But what's hard for me and I think some other business owners to understand is that SEO can actually lead if you have the right funnels and nurturing process in place, it can actually lead to a return. I would hope so. (laughs) That's the goal, right? In marketing. Right? (laughs) (laughs) Most of my clients, organic traffic, free traffic drives like 80% of their sales, like 60 to 80% of their sales. And then we have some clients to go from, I mean, a lot of these clients have been with me for a while went from baby businesses doing, you know, they would do retail sale, like wholesale and retail and not a lot online. They do maybe 80,000 a year online. And now they do like 1.2 million a month in just organic sales. And so there's huge opportunity. And and what's interesting to me is with paid ads, like I'm not the rock thrower. I don't think that I'm not, a lot of SEO guys are like paid ads suck and paid ads guys are like SEO sucks. If it drives a return, like do it all. Like you don't have to pick one or the other. But the thing with paid ads is a lot of time people say, well, why would I do SEO when I can just give my money to Facebook and Google and just have you know, instant traction? So the pros and cons of SEO versus paid ads are almost exactly the opposite. So with paid ads, it's super cool because you can get quick traction. But the problem is like, you got to burn money to figure it out. Like, Yes, it's you can get quick traction, awesome. but you're going to probably lose your ass for a while. So then you do that and then eventually you figure it out. And then a lot of people think, well, how do you keep up with algorithms. Well, what are you doing with paid ads? You're keeping up with algorithm, algorithms too. And then a lot of people say, well, there's so many things in SEO, which I'm not saying is not true, but there's still a lot of leverage in paid ads too. So it's not like paid ads is any easier. But I mean, if you want to look at it just from a dollar perspective, okay, do you want to throw 5,000 bucks a month? I'm just making up numbers here. 5,000 bucks a month on paid ads for quick traction. But here's the thing. You don't own Facebook. You don't own Google. Yes. You are building their platform. You are building their legacy. And then what's going to happen when the next thing comes along and stills their traffic or the cost per conversion continues to increase and then it no longer becomes effective? Meanwhile, you could have been spending 3000 bucks a month on SEO. Yeah, it probably takes a year or however long. But then you're locked in. Like you can't really... like you you build up a reputation between your website and Google. So you got to kind of work pretty hard to screw it up. So once you're there, it's a pretty safe place to be. It's a lot less volatile than paid ads. I mean, how many people do you know, Rachel, that they wake up in the morning and they're like, holy crap, my Facebook ad account got shut down. It's like every other day you see somebody post on Facebook. (laughs) So, I mean, are you okay with delayed gratification? And if you are, not only is it going to be delayed gratification, it's going to last a lot longer. It's going to be a bigger return on your investment. It's going to be less volatile. So it just depends on your patience and tolerance. Okay. So one question I have is like, what are things that people believe about SEO that's totally wrong where you're like, that's just not the case anymore? Um, the, one of the common ones that just won't die 
is there's this thing called meta keywords. Mm -hmm. So meta keyword, there's not to be confused. So, so for some of the listeners that are somewhat savvy, there's, there's different types of meta tags. So meta keywords is a type of tag. And what it is, is it's just like a little one line in your code. You don't, when you look at a website, you don't visually see it. It's, but it's there in the code. And what used to happen before Google came along and maybe here in a moment, we talk about how Google came onto the scene different than the other search engines. But before Google really came along and started dominating, yeah. webmasters would just like type in and stuff keywords into this little tag. Yes. And so then search engines would be like, oh, Rachel's website's about this and this and this. Well, obviously that got abused. So Google stopped. Google is on record in a YouTube video saying as early as 2009, so 11 years ago, that they don't pay attention to it. They don't even use it. So I don't know why some people are still out there. Like if you go on Twitter or something, you type in meta keywords, you'll still see who knows out there, you know, trying to get SEO leads. Somebody will post a question about my website's not ranking. And then there's always some one guy that's like, you need to add more meta keywords. And it's just, <laughs> so <laughs> meta keywords is one thing. Um, you know, one, one common misunderstanding is like that you just turn it on. Like you just turn on SEO. Yeah. And that's kind of funny to explain because, well, if you just turn it on, I think it would be a lot more volatile. I'm not saying it's not volatile now or, you know, competitive. Like if everybody could just like turn it on, <laughs> like it'd be a whole, <laughs> whole different story. So um, it's usually out, you know, outdated things. Okay. Since you planted the seed of thought, let's talk a little bit about how the algorithms have changed. Yeah. So the, the biggest algorithm updates, um, are named after black and white animals. Which yeah. is, so there, there's been lots of algorithms that come out, you know, um, that all have oddball names. So panda, penguin, caffeine, hummingbird, meerkat, like whatever. So anyways, panda and penguin were probably two of the biggest ones. So panda came out in 2011. And basically what that algorithm did was a lot of people started to realize, well, hey, content's important. But I'm not a very good content writer, so I'm just going to go copy and paste it from Wikipedia or go steal it from Rachel's blog. And so then people would start to rank for those if the problem it created was, all right, me and Rachel, we are competing on the same keywords, but Rachel has um, a, a bigger audience, but Damon writes unique content and Rachel knows it. And so Rachel watches my blog every day. And because her website has a better reputation with Google, even if I post it first, if she steals it from me, Google's going to say, oh, well, Rachel has a better reputation, so we're going to give Rachel the credit. So Panda came along and said, okay, let's start to pay attention with timestamps, um, credibility of the website, this and that. And so it really kind of made it a, a more equal playing field on the content side of things. Then um, Penguin was kind of the same concept, but with backlinks. So backlinks is when another website links to your website. So same concept, quality versus quantity. People used to mass produce backlinks. And that's another thing that needs to die too, is a lot of people still use automated software and they'll mass produce these links, but it's quality over quantity. And so when we used to do link building campaigns, you know, 12, 13 years ago, uh, we would kind of like semi-automate it. We never fully went automated just because of the quality control issues, but we would try and excuse me, find websites that were relevant and then we would quality control them and then do some of the semi-automation. And so back then we used to do, I don't know, 1,000 to 2,000 links a, a month. And now in the same amount of time, because it is completely manual now, we might get like five to 10. Wow. And so, but that quality of those links matters so much more than the, the quantity from back then. And, and that actually um, played out really well for us when that algorithm came out because I always kind of wore a tin hat about algorithms. And I thought, well, Google's, you know, if I can identify these patterns, Google's infinitely smarter than I am. That's kind of scary. And what's interesting is it was when I first started building our business, um, I hired someone in there who was like, I'm so good at SEO. I had no idea what that meant. And before you know, <laughs> before you know it, I was on all of those like backlink farm directories. Yeah. And I, yes. And I saw it and I was like, I don't even know SEO, but I know that this doesn't feel right. This feels like a weird shortcut. You you weren't proud of being next to Viagra? Not necessarily. 
(laughs) (laughs) No, not at all. I was like, oh my gosh, what is my face doing right there? And I could tell because if you looked at, uh, it's just, it was a mess. And I don't even know if we ever really cleaned it up. But at the same time, I was like, oh. There's, um, that's one of the first things that we do when we board a new client is we go do what's called like link detox. So we go pull, pull their backlink portfolio. So we'll, we'll clean their site up and, and audit the site structure, but then we'll also go audit their backlinks. Yeah. And almost always like the first couple of weeks is just clean up because it's super important to clean that up before you start building new links on top of it because then you muddy the water. So anyone who has listened to this already is like, okay, I feel like I need to get on this. Do you teach people where to start? I'm not a salesy guy, so I hate even mentioning this. I wrote, but I wrote a book. Is that book like still available, still legit? I love yeah. reading, so I know it's going to like just yeah. start. It's And here's the thing. That doesn't mean I'll be like, oh, good. I know all I need to know about SEO, but now at least I won't feel stupid talking about it. Yeah, I'll send you when when we're done. Um, tell, tell me where to send it and I'll send oh, you a copy. Oh, I'm happy but... to just buy it. Like... And then I'll leave you a review on Amazon. Read it. <laughs> well, there, so. well, it's on Amazon. Um, and then if the listeners, I have a link if if they want a free copy. So um, free freeseobook.com. And then there's a PDF copy on there. And on the thank you page, it'll invite you to a Facebook group I have. Um, and then my platform of choice for I'm most active on is, is LinkedIn. And that's it. So, Got nothing else. Honestly, the best marketing is great products and great results. Damon, thank you so much for joining me. This has been awesome. That's good to chat with you face to face, Rachel. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. We'll catch you in the next episode.